Hello everybody, uh, this is Brother Luke, uh, Sin City Preacher. The uh, subject of this video today is the top reasons people reject Christianity. Now I'm sure there are other reasons besides uh, the five I'm going to list and discuss uh, in this video. Uh, I briefly want to just explain the reason and uh, give an answer why the reason uh, should not be a valid reason for someone to reject Christianity. The first reason is the claim that the Bible uh, is not scientific. It's uh, the year of 2013, and I am 62 years old. And I recall back when I was about 12 years old and had a biology class, and I was first introduced to the, quote, theory of evolution, Darwinian evolution. And over the years, uh, every year that my science class would teach me about evolution again, I noticed after a few years they, they stopped calling it a theory. They just referred to it as evolution. And over time, America and much of the world has been indoctrinated into this um, theory of ev Darwinian evolution so that people today, many people just accept it as a scientific fact. And because of that, uh, a lot of people believe that uh, the Bible couldn't possibly be true because it doesn't conform to this scientific fact of Darwinian evolution. Well, uh, there is a mountain of evidence available to anyone who is willing to look at it with an open mind. The evidence is overwhelming, proving that the theory of Darwinian evolution is impossible to be true. In fact, I would call it a fairy tale for adults. Rather than trying to disprove Darwinian evolution right now, I will just refer you to uh, my playlist. Um, I have around a hundred videos I've collected that um, are designed to dispute Darwinian evolution and prove that the, Bi the Bible is scientifically true. And I want to make a prediction today. I believe there's already enough proof against Darwinian evolution that Anybody who will look at it would be convinced that it's uh, impossible. But I do believe that uh, we're on the verge of the world coming to the realization that uh, this is a, an impossible theory that man has invented uh, to, as a way of um, rejecting that there could possibly be a deity that actually created the universe and created the world and created mankind. Because man is desperate to reject God. He had to come up with some alternative. And this Darwinian evolution is man's vain, feeble attempt at a, an alternative concept. Well, it won't be long now before people will be looking back at Darwinian evolution and laughing and scoffing, and the world will say how foolish we were, how uh, brainwashed we were to think that that could have possibly been true. <clears throat> but uh, if uh, you do desire evidence and proof today, it is available. So go to my playlist, Science, God, and the Bible, because the Bible is scientifically correct. Darwinian evolution is not. So, this is no reason to reject the Bible and, and uh, to reject Christianity. Another reason that uh, is common today for people to reject Christianity is that many people are unwilling or they feel they are unable to, quote, repent of their sins, or as some people would define that, 
to stop sinning. People are under the false impression that in order to become a Christian, you must first stop sinning. And that is not what biblical Christianity is. It is not based upon our promise or our ability to stop sinning and then we become acceptable to God and can become a Christian. That is false doctrine. It's heresy what we would call work salvation or lordship salvation. That is not what the Bible tells us we must do in order to become a Christian, in order to have eternal life in heaven. There's only one thing the Bible requires us to do, and that is to put our complete reliance in Jesus Christ as our Savior. When we trust him completely to give us eternal life, he is faithful and he gives eternal life to everyone who trusts him for it. It's really that simple, and it's that easy. Now, many people, after they put their faith in Jesus, the Holy Spirit lives inside them, and therefore they begin to change because the Holy Spirit transforms them into a new person. But this is the work of God. Not This is not our own work at, at not changing ourselves. So you do not need to use this as an excuse to reject Christianity any longer. Don't feel that you must... First, uh, be willing or able to stop your sinning before you can become a Christian. Another reason that people are rejecting Christianity is because the world looks at many professing Christians and says, if that's what a Christian is, I don't want to be one. They see Christians uh, who are hypocrites, and they see Christians who are mean-spirited and telling them that, God hates them because they're a sinner and uh, they're, they're angry and they're representing God as an angry God. And they say, if that's what Christianity is, I don't want any part of it. Well, uh, it certainly is true that many professing Christians, in fact, uh, many true Christians, really are hypocrites. In fact, I, I would suspect that we're all hypocrites and including myself, to a certain extent. We all have a certain degree of hypocrisy within us. We're not able to always do everything we say, and therefore uh, we are hypocrites because we don't always do what we say. But just because mankind and even Christians are hypocrites, that is no reason to reject Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is not a hypocrite. Jesus Christ is God himself, perfect, Jesus came down from heaven. He became a man. He did this so that he could die for your sins. And he did it. He was faithful. He went to the cross willingly. He suffered and died on the cross. He paid for all your sins. He paid for all my sins. He paid for the sins of the whole world so that we could be reconciled to God. And so Jesus is worthy of your faith. Jesus is not a hypocrite. Don't reject Jesus Christ simply because some Christians are hypocrites. Here's another reason that I find that some people are rejecting Christianity. They think that um, if a person uh, never becomes a Christian, and then they're going to go to hell and burn and suffer in hell, forever and ever and ever and ever, and it never ends. They think that this is unreasonable and that uh, it, it is very difficult them to believe and love uh, a, and trust a God who could do such a thing as to burn people in hell forever and ever, just because they never trusted Jesus as their Savior. Well, this is one of the reasons that uh, uh, over... Uh, many years of study and debate and discussions with people on the subject of eternal torment, uh, I have come to the conclusion that there is no such thing as eternal torment in hell. And I've made a video on that, and I have a playlist on this subject. And uh, I believe that the character and nature of God uh, does not conform to the idea of suffering, uh, uh, tormenting, torturing people in hell forever and ever and ever. 
And the world as a whole looks at this whole concept of eternal torment in hell as, that doesn't sound like God, it sounds more like the devil. I mean, after all, personally, would you burn anybody with a blowtorch for even one minute? I don't think anyone watching this video, unless you're a psychopath serial killer, you would find any reason, any way that you could possibly put a blowtorch to someone, even for a minute. So to think that God, who it, the Bible says God is love, and it says that God is just, God is merciful. So how could this God, who is love and justice and mercy, burn people in fire forever and ever and ever? It doesn't it seem that it is just unjust and unreasonable. So my conclusion is that... Uh, when people die without Jesus as their Savior, uh, they die. Uh, God judges them and says, you never received eternal life, so you're going to die. And then they're thrown into the lake of fire, just like a person is cremated. They are cremated, and they no longer exist. They perish. And the Bible in Romans 6.23 says, the wages of sin is death. So because of sin, because of man's sin, we all die. And when people get judged by God and they die and then they're thrown in hell, they perish. The Bible also says in John 3.16, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So the question is, will you put your faith in Jesus Christ and receive eternal life? Or will you not put your faith in Jesus and therefore you will die and perish? So if a person understands that God is not a cruel being that just wants to burn people in hell forever and ever, it, it is more um, acceptable to people to that I can believe in a God like that. But how could they believe in a God that would be so cruel and merciless as to torture people forever and ever? This is an obstacle. Now, if, if it was true, uh, if the Bible, uh, if I derived from the Bible that eternal torment in hell was true, then I would accept it and say that God is sovereign. God is able to do that if he wants to. But from my study of the Bible, I've concluded that that is not the God of the Bible. The God that I know in the Bible would never burn people in hell and torture them forever and ever and ever. So, uh, if this has been an obstacle for you in believing in Jesus Christ as your Savior, uh, then, then there's no reason for you to reject Jesus because of him being unfair and wanting to burn people in hell. So, now you can are free to trust Jesus or reject him. But if you want to reject him, the Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So your choice is, will you die or will you live with Jesus Christ forever and ever in paradise and joy? That's up to you. And then uh, the final reason that I'm going to cite in this video is Calvinism. Calvinism takes the, the idea of eternal torment and it takes it a step further. Calvin is set, says, not only is there eternal torment in hell, but the vast majority of people ever born in history, uh, God created them strictly for the purpose of burning them in hell and torturing them forever. They do not have a free will. They do not not even have the ability to believe in Jesus because God made them just for the purpose of torturing them in hell. And then there's a small percentage of the people that Calvinism says God created them to be uh, uh, saved and believe in Jesus and have eternal life in heaven. And they do not have any choice about that either. God made them and forced them to believe in Jesus. And God made 95% of the rest of the world and made them so it was impossible for them to believe. And their only fate is to die and suffer in hell forever and ever. It's not possible for them to ever get saved. Well, 
that's another example of extreme uh, uh, in, interpretation of the Bible that's not true. Uh, we do have free will. We do have the ability to believe in Jesus or not believe in Jesus. If everybody has that ability, and it's up to you right now. You can choose to trust Jesus as your Savior and receive eternal life, or you can choose to reject Jesus Christ. God does not make people without any choice at all in this matter, just so he can burn them in hell and torture them forever and ever. So, now I, there are many other reasons that people can cite that for them to reject Christianity and the Bible. But I think these are five of the main reasons. So if any of these reasons have held you back from believing in Jesus Christ as your Savior and receiving eternal life in heaven, there is no reason for you to reject Jesus any longer. Put your faith in Jesus. Jesus the Bible says God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for our sin and sins. You see, even though we're sinners, God loves you so much that Jesus Christ died for your sins so that you could have eternal life in heaven. So the God of the Bible is a God of love, mercy, justice, forgiveness. And Jesus already paid for your sins. All that is required of you now is to put your complete faith and reliance in Jesus and he'll give you eternal life. If you decide to do that, please make a comment and let me know. So, bless you, in the name of our great Savior God. His name is Jesus Christ.